Hi everyone, let's talk about Saloon Tycoon. And what I think, well, it's a fast, it's, it's a lot faster than I thought it would be. It's a very fast 3D building uh, fun little game. Uh, we were surprised when we first played it to play it, just how quickly those cubes run out. Just as you maybe are starting to think about how you can grab all of those characters, the cubes are gone. And you should have thought about this from the start. You shouldn't have been kind of building up your engine as you might do in other games. You need to just get cracking on those things that you know that you needed. There's a, there's a ton of different characters from different buildings. And I know that some of those will come from extras, but the, the base game itself had a lot as well. There are a lot of open claim tile, open claim cards, and you'll only see four of these in a game. More in more player games. Uh, there are quite a deck of, I don't know where they are, there's quite a deck of secret claim cards as well. So with all of these different things going together in the different rooms, even though you see the same rooms are available to you from the start every game, the amount of cards and goals and things means that every game is going to be quite different because you get four secret goals at the start that you're going to get to pick from. There's going to be at least four of those open claim cards in the middle every game. And there's going to be a lot of variability just from that. Add to that people's preferences to how they want to build, which ones they want to go for first. Do they want more gold? Do they want more cards? Which characters they're going to attract? Are those characters going to get stolen from them because they built them too early? If you if you attract all of these characters from the start, you're going to make yourself a target and everyone's going to be paying their gold to bribe characters away from you. But it does cost quite a bit to do that. Six gold is quite a lot, so you need to make sure that it's going to really benefit you and that someone else doesn't just steal that character away from you as well, which means your six gold will have been worth nothing because they're, unless you're doing it for an open claim, if you're doing it for a secret claim, you want to do that as late as possible in the game. But... The game can just be snatched from underneath you. It can just end really quickly. If someone gets a big combo off, as, as I did in that, of finishing a load of, was it pantries that give you two cubes? So buy a couple of cubes, get the pantry bonus, buy a couple more cubes, and there's a load of buildings finished in one go. And you can really chain things like that nicely. I also like how the, the outlaw cards are attracted as well. By being the first person to excel in a certain area, whether it's getting the building cubes, getting a certain number of tiles or a certain amount of money or something, you're going to be held back by being that good at a certain thing. And the, the penalties that they give you are really quite strong, although different people are going to end up with different ones. So it's not going to be piled all onto one person, presumably, but being the, the richest person or the first to get 10 money is going to limit you by one income for the rest of the game, unless you're going to get rid of that outlaw by building the chapel or by spending some money to bribe the outlaw to basically say, go over to someone else's saloon, please. Uh, they, are, they can be a real detriment to your play. So it's really nice how they are attracted to you by basically showing off at certain things, by being too good at certain things, then you're going to attract an outlaw. And it can lead to an interesting thing where nobody wants to have over 10 money in their turn, which means you can't get some tiles like the cellar or something like that that cost 12 and 14. It means that those things are kind of off limits because no one wants to have more than 10. And no one wants to be the first to spend more than five cubes. No one wants to be the first to have more than five tiles. But obviously everybody has to go over those at some point. So outlaws are going to go out to people and sometimes there's an interesting little standoff, but I like how they're attracted to you. Overall though, I'd say that it's not a game for me personally for a couple of reasons. And first is, I pretty much only play two player and it feels like it would be a lot better with more people playing. Like there are tycoon cards of steal a total of three from any combination of players. In a two player game, that's always gonna be the other person. There's no like question about it. For sending outlaws away, you have to send them to the other person. There's no there's no kind of see who is the furthest in front or whatever. If you want to get rid of that outlaw because you desperately need an end card, they have to go to the other person no matter what. And it feels like the the grabbing for claims and the people and swapping all of the people around and maybe more competition for certain tiles, it would be better in a game with more players because it feels like you can go off in your own direction and do different open claims and not really get in each other's way because there's so many cards that it's not that likely you're going to get that much crossover in just a two-player game. And we, <laughs> we did in this playthrough, but we found that we can just kind of go off in our own way and not really get in the other person's way. And that is the second part, really. 
we don't, and, the, and it's my fault for not really paying that much attention to the game on Kickstarter. I just start back. But the the game is built around, it's, it's the Old West, so it's very thematic, of you need to be stealing these characters from other players or sending outlaws over to them to try and mess them up. You don't have to do that, but it's definitely felt in the games where we, we don't do that to each other, but it's definitely felt like we are missing a big chunk of the game by not doing that, by just trying to get on in building the things as fast as we can. You're missing a key bit, especially when the cards are trying to get you to move characters or steal money from other players and things like that. When you absolutely refuse to do that, it feels it feels like a chunk of this game is missing in doing that. And I don't think that'll be a problem for a lot of people. If you don't mind that at all, then this is seems like a fantastic, fast-paced uh, little 3D building game. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, well, you'll have seen the playthrough and made up your own mind. But if that sounds like something you're interested in, and it's Saloon Tycoon from Van Ryder Games. And I think that's all for Saloon Tycoon. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.